Good morning and welcome to morning prayers on Tuesday the 29th of December from St Peter's Church, Ipsley. Some opening prayers. O Lord, open our lips and, and our, our mouths mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. praise. You laid the foundations of the earth and, and the, the heavens are the work of your hands. hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assume the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And our first reading this morning is one of the set psalms for today, and it's Psalm 19. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voices go out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Mm -hmm. Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sin. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been really thirsty? So thirsty that if you were allowed to, you could drink 12 bottles of standard fizzy sized pop in one go. If so, I can beat you. I drank 13 bottles, one after the other, and I'm still here to tell the tale. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. I was a young teacher in Uganda in the early 1970s and our school planned an expedition to climb Mount Kadam in Karamoja, a dry semi-desert region in northern Uganda bordering Kenya. Kadam is 3,060 metres high. That's just over 10,000 feet. And to remind us, Snowden is only just 1,100 metres. There were about five staff in the party and about 10 senior students. It was hot and dry 
and dusty, and the climb took three days. Two nights spent on the mountain in the rock shelter, one night coming up, one night going down. And I was the quartermaster for the expedition. We climbed with a guide and porters to the rock shelter on day one. The water supply that we'd been promised was there turned out to be drips of water coming off the cliff face. We collected it in a souffre, that's an open pan, and boiled the water for safety and waited till it cooled. There was not a lot to go round. The next day we all climbed to the summit and the quartermaster brought out the raisins for a summit meal and found he'd bought dried prunes instead. <laughs> I don't think I ever ate those packets of dried prunes. When we got back to the cave, we were very tired and thirsty. Some of the porters took a bowl of smoking charcoal and disappeared. Some time later they returned and handed out to us some of the honey in the honeycomb that they had smoked out from a bee's nest they knew was nearby. I've never tasted anything sweeter in my whole life. When we got down the mountain the next day, we headed for the nearest duka. That's a simple country store. And 13 bottles of Fanta, it was. <laughs> Questions. Is the perfect law of the Lord sweeter than that for me? Are the trustworthy statutes of the Lord sweeter than that for you? Are the right precepts of the Lord sweeter than that for your church leaders? Are the radiant commands of the Lord sweeter than that for your Christian relatives? Is the pure fear of the Lord sweeter than that for your Christian friends? Are the sure ordinances of the Lord sweeter than that for the whole church? Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden thoughts, then I will be blameless innocent of great transgression. Thank you, Peter. We're going to do our second reading, and this time it's some verses from the prophecy from Micah. And it's Micah chapter one, the first four verses, and then into chapter two, verses 12 and 13. So Micah chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth during the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, the vision he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, O peoples, all of you. Listen, O earth and all who are in it that the sovereign Lord may witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Look, the Lord is coming from his dwelling place. He comes down and treads the high places of the earth. The mountains melt beneath him and the valleys split apart like wax before the fire, like water rushing down a slope. In chapter two, Verse 12. I will surely gather you, all of you, O Jacob. I will surely bring together the remnant of Israel. I will bring them together like sheep in a pen, 
like a flock in its pasture. The place will throng with people. One who breaks open the way will go up before them. They will break through the gate and go out. Their king will pass through before them, the Lord at their head. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Peter. About 300 years after David composed the psalm we read earlier, the prophet Micah prophesied. At this time, the nation under David had broken up into two parts in the time of his grandchildren. The northern kingdom was called Israel and the southern kingdom was called Judah. The kingdoms were often known by their capitals. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel and Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah. We see the kingdoms referred to by these titles in verse 1. Micah, as a prophet, came from a town about 30 kilometres or so southwest of Jerusalem. His prophecy is about coming judgment, but also about God's restoration and mercy. And he spoke to both the people in the north and those in the south. And many scholars believe he overlapped with the prophet Isaiah. Now, false prophets in those days tended to butter up the leaders and people by stressing God's gracious attributes at the expense of his righteousness and justice. Hmm, are things any different today? This led the nation into a false sense of security and to eventual ruin. Micah, on the other hand, preached judgment upon sin and grace for the repentant. And this included a promise of a new ruler over all Israel who would come from Bethlehem. We read this in Micah 5.2. That's one of the prophetic references to the coming of Christ. So let's just take a brief look at two points from the first verses and two points from the second verses. First of all, God's word comes to all. See verse 2. Hear, O people, all of you. Listen, O earth, and all who are in it. God's word comes to people of every age, people of every nation, people of every social standing, all men and women. And when the psalmist says in Psalm 22, the earth is the Lord and everything in it, the word for everything is the same as the word here for all that are in it. So no matter who we are or where we are, we need to listen to God. Secondly, we see in verse 2, God sees all, the, that the sovereign Lord may witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Here, the writer combines together the two great names of God, his special covenant holy name, and his name expressing his lordship. And what is more, the Lord records all that is happening, all that's wrong, and remembers it, and will testify to it as a witness at the eternal court in his eternal holy temple. How will you plead before that court? How will I? And now we go on to chapter 2, those verses 12 and 13. I will surely gather you, O Jacob, and another name, 
for the people of God. So God will gather his people. Micah was saying to the people of the land in his day that they would be as scattered as a nation throughout the known world as a result of their faithlessness. But God would rescue them and bring them back together like a shepherd gathering his flock. Surely, this reminds us of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Yes, despite our failings of 2020, God will be our shepherd in whatever 2021 brings. And then verse 13 is a prophetic picture of what the future would be for the besieged people of Jerusalem. A picture that actually came true as the Assyrians were turned away from besieging Jerusalem. And you can read that in Isaiah 37. And now I'll read to you what my commentary actually says about verse 13. And this commentary was written 40 odd years ago. And may this verse be a prophecy about COVID for us as a nation as we go forth into 2021. The writer says, the release from Jerusalem occurs in three stages. Israel's shepherd king goes up and broke, breaks open the blockaded gate. The masses break out and pass through the open bay and their king takes his rightful position as their head. Israel's earthly kings failed. Her heavenly king will triumph. So from the end of Psalm 19 that we've read, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. We'll be coming to our intercessions, but before I lead us in prayer, I want to read the second psalm set for today, Psalm 20. And in verse 5, it says, May the Lord grant all your requests. Let us trust him to do that. So Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Amen. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Mm -hmm. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Mm -hmm. Some trust in chariots and some in horses but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. O oh Lord, save the King. Answer us when we call. Amen. Wonderful psalm to lead us into our intercessions. There will be short pauses so that you can bring to mind people, situations that fit into whatever it is I am sharing with you. 
So let us pray. Let us pray rather. Lord of all, we have heard again the good news of Jesus Christ, the glad tidings of his coming, and we have rejoiced in the wonder of this season. But we pray now for those for whom it brings no joy, serving only to remind them of their pain. Come again to your world and, and turn tears into laughter, sorrow into gladness. We pray for the poor, the hungry, the homeless. Mm. Those for whom this Christmas will simply be another day in the struggle for survival. For those caught up in war, violence and persecution. Those for whom this Christmas might be their last. For the unloved, the lonely, the homeless, those for whom Christmas merely heightens their sense of isolation. Mm. Come again into your world and turn and tears, tears into, into laughter, laughter sorrow into gladness. Life. We pray for the anxious, the troubled and the fearful, those for whom Christmas was swamped by worries. For the sick, the suffering, the broken in body and mind, Mm -hmm. Those for whom this Christmas meant only another day of pain. Mm -hmm. And we pray for the bereaved, the divorced, the estranged. Mm -hmm. Those for whom Christmas brings home the memory of happier times. Come again to your world and turn tears into, into laughter, laughter, sorrow into, into gladness. gladness. Lord of all, you give us a vision through the song of Mary of the way the world ought to be and one day shall be. A world in which you show the strength of your arm and scatter the proud, in which you bring down the powerful and lift up the lonely. Fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. A world of justice in which good will triumph, mm. evil be ended and the meek inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Lord, give us confidence to believe that day can come and resolve to make it happen. Stir the hearts of your people everywhere to work in whatever way possible for change, to bring the dawn of your kingdom closer and so translate that vision into reality. Come again to your world and, and turn tears into laughter, sorrow into gladness. And in the name of Christ, we ask it. Amen. 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 And as we pray our colic for today, we've been asked to remember Thomas Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury, martyred in 1170. 
Lord God, who grave, gave grace to your servant Thomas Beckett to put aside all earthly fears and be faithful even to death, grant that we, disregarding worldly esteem, may fight all wrong, uphold your rule and serve you to our life's end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We close our time of prayer by saying the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may God, who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to being with you tomorrow. <laughs>